Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to another very sporadically released video by yours truly. Doing something a little bit different this time, as usual. I don't think I've really ever made two similar videos. Is that hurting me? Who knows? Doesn't matter. I'm doing what I want. So what we're going to jump into today is some of the teleportation systems in RuneScape that are way more obscure, really don't have too much of a use. You may have heard of some of these because honestly, people make so many videos about this game, but hopefully there's one or two that you didn't really know about. We all know and love our useful teleports, portal nexus in our house, awesome, fairy rings, spirit trees, all the achievement diary teleports, super useful, but there's also so many old things in RuneScape that are just so dated and useless. So I thought I'd go through some of the more interesting and less known teleports in the game. And we're going to do it top 10 style. No one does those anymore. I don't know why top 10s are awesome. So that's how we're going to do it. Let's jump in. All right. So kicking things off here with number 10, we're going to go with the balloon transport system that you unlock after Enlightened Journey. Put this one low because most people have at least heard of it because you got to do a quest to unlock it, but it's not really that useful for getting anywhere. You go to Castle Wars, Grand Tree, Entrana, Crafting Guild, Taverly, and Varrock, uh, but none of them are really like near banks or anything. There may be some Iron Man going to Varrock for the sawmill early on. It's basically the only practical use. And you have to charge it with logs every time or just store them ahead of time. So it's kind of a weird transport system. And you actually, I just learned that you can't take it if you have more than 40 kilograms of weight on your character. So it kind of limits you uh, from that perspective. You can only bring so many. I'm at 29 with basically an empty inventory. So you got to watch that. It's really not useful for much of anything. But since people have probably heard of it, number 10. All right. So coming up next at number nine is another method that you probably know exists, but never really use. And that's the canoe system that kind of travels along the river Lumbridge. And this one's kind of cool. It's definitely old. It really gets you around like the early game map. And you need some wood cutting to be able to shape the canoes, but you just come down, chop your tree, shape a, uh, a weka. If you have 57 wood cutting, that's the best one and will take you the furthest. Little me would have been so proud. I never thought I'd get 57 wood cutting as a kid to do this. And then you just pick where you feel like going. Let's say Edgeville. These are here only options. And it plays this cool animation, but you can tell from like the destination selection and the animation that this is just an old system. It's neat to get around the early map, but again, you need 57 wood cutting for the big one and even like 30s and 40s to make the smaller ones. So odds are by that point, you can teleport and stuff anyway. A couple niche uses, but not that great overall. Moving up to number eight, this one's pretty interesting, actually. It's in the Dorgish Khan area, where you can come up and talk to this guy, Oldak, and tell him to buy a sphere. So if you have Molten Glass and La Runes, then you can trade him for spheres to Dorgish Khan, Goblin Village, or the Plain of Mud. And this is actually a pretty unique teleport in that where you end up is actually random. So let's go ahead and buy 10 from him. And you're going to end up somewhere in Dorgish Khan, but there's not a set endpoint to the teleport. It's got a pretty cool animation there, too. And so if I use one, let's see, I end up in this house. All right, I'm in Dorgish Khan. But if I use it again, then I'm going to end up somewhere totally different within Dorgish Khan. It is kind of useful because this is an annoying place to get to otherwise. So if you have a few and you just want to get somewhere in the city for like a clue or something. It's nice for that. Same thing with Goblin Village. It's kind of out of the way and you can get there. But these are pretty uh, like niche items and you're not going to use them all that much. Maybe stock up on a few and use them here and there. But the animation is really cool. So number eight. So number seven is probably the last one that most people have at least heard of here. And this is the Eagles Transport System after you do Eagles Peak. You can tie a rope to an eagle and go to Oozer, uh, Relica, or Felled Up Hills. It's kind of used back in the day to get to different uh, hunter areas, but there's not really much use to do it now except for a couple achievement diaries. So just bring your rope. There's also spawns in most of these and attach it to whatever eagle you feel like. Let's go to the desert and you will fly out, end up at your destination, but it's kind of just all taking you to really remote locations that aren't that useful. Another cool teleport animation though. So honestly, it's kind of hard to rank them from here on out. They're all pretty useless, but we're gonna go with number six at the Wizards Guild in Yanel. If you go all the way up to the top floor, 
you may actually not even know this one exists. There's three portals that'll take you to, uh, one is the Wizard's Tower in Draenor, one's the Dark Wizard's Tower in the Falador area, and then one's that Sorcerer's Tower where you do Scorpion Catcher and stuff. None incredibly useful end destinations. I actually don't even know which one goes where. They all just say Magic Portal. Um, so yeah, there's one, number six. Coming back to Dorgish Khan again, we're going to go over the train that goes between Dorgish Khan and Keldegrim. If you come upstairs in Dorgish Khan and go through this doorway here, after you've done the, uh, I think it's another slice of ham that unlocks this, there's a train that goes to Keldegrim and back to Dorgish Khan. You just stand and wait for a little while. It'll tell you that the train's going to leave shortly. And then you will get to go to Keldegrim, and it just goes between those two places, nowhere else, and you have to go pretty deep into either place to even get to the train, so it's not the most effective way to get between either one. But there is, once again, a cool little animation that you get to watch. Don't wait too long, it'll leave back to Dorishkan in like 20 seconds, and you don't want to go back there, you're using this for, for practical transportation. Get off at your station. So number four here would have been a pretty valid contender for number one, except it was used by Settled in his Tile Man series, which is pretty popular. So a lot of more people may know about this one. But if you talk to Shanty at the Shanty Pass and ask him what this place is, you can tell him you're an outlaw and then you'll get thrown in jail. <laughs> and once you're here, you can tell him you don't want to pay the fine. Keep insisting that you won't pay the fine. And then he will teleport you to Port Serum Jail and you can get out from here, pick the lock. So it's an interesting way to get between those two places. Really not useful for anyone except Settled that one time. So thanks for ruining my countdown, Settled. Not really. Love you. Number three is going to be the Lady of the Waves charter ship. You've got to come all the way out here from a Shiloh village or however you're getting here. The ship's in a really inconvenient place. And talk to the captain. Tell him you want to buy a ticket, and you can go either to Port Kazard or Port Sarum. And it's going to give you a random cost between 20 and 50 gold every time. Make sure you have at least 50 if you want to use this for whatever reason. And you can travel to either one. It's a one way. You can't get back, so that's cool. And I believe it's a medium achievement diary, so that definitely constitutes 100% of that dude's business. But yeah, shout out to Jagex for making that a task and keeping this guy with a job so he can support his family. No one else would ever use it otherwise. So our runner-up second most useless slash obscure transportation method is the Ogre Boat. You get access to this during Recipe for Disaster, and it will take you between this point uh, near the Chompy Ogre Guy and Karamja. But the cost every time you want to do it is two chompies if you're on this side, which chompies suck to get. And this is just not going to take you anywhere worthwhile. It's nowhere near worth it. And if you're trying to take it from Karanja over here, you need to bring uh, some of the herbs from the jungle potion. I can't remember exactly which ones, but again, pretty tedious to gather and absolutely not worth it. So this is number two. Before we go into number one, we're going to have a couple little honorable mentions. But yeah, came in close, but not quite number one. So as a quick bonus, I'm going to go through what I think is the worst teleport spell in every spellbook, all four in the game. There's a number of useless ones in pretty much every book, so this is kind of up for debate, but my personal opinion. In Arceus, I think the Salve Graveyard is probably the worst one. It takes you to these ghouls, but there's a fairy ring right here, which is a way more common way of getting around the map. Lunar, Moon Clan Teleport, it's the same as the Home Teleport. Most of the other ones on this book do have some kind of use with farming or something else, so it's probably the least useful one because you can just do it with no runes. Standard Spellbook, the one we all started with, know and love every teleport in this one. And most of them are pretty decent, although the Watchtower is not that good. I guess if you want to use those Wizard's Tower portals then this is a nice one and if you don't have the diaries it actually takes you somewhere even more remote up in the actual watchtower so not gonna get anywhere too useful from that and lastly ancients this one has probably the highest concentration of not very good teleports unless you're doing stuff in the wilderness i think seniston is probably the worst it's kind of just a worse varrock teleport mixed with a worse dig site teleport 
you're not going to use this pretty much at all. I think there's maybe a clue step in this area if you're hyper efficient, but honestly, it's not even going to save you that much time. Definitely the worst. Okay, everybody. Now the moment you've all been waiting for, number one. And don't worry, it's not the Wizard's Tower again. I'm actually going to use lessons from my own video and take the portal to the Dark Wizard's Tower, which is where our number one transportation is. Come up to the top here, and if you talk to Xandar Horfire, you just tell him that you want to stay in his tower, and he's going to say, uh-uh and teleport you to the middle of the Lumbridge Swamp. So you come from a super hard to access remote location near Falador, and it sends you one way to another remote useless location. I've never seen anyone use it for any practical reason. So settled, didn't leverage this one. I'd say it's the most obscure. Uh, yeah, that is the end of the list. So if you liked it, uh, feel free to leave a comment, drop a like, subscribe if you want to see more. Really appreciate it if you do any of those things. And uh, yeah, let me know in the comments if you think I missed anything or if you'd rank them differently, but I'll see you in the next one.